Um, our second talk is by Atterberg Ogun. He is a master's student at Top University of Economics and Technology. Um, he's also affiliated with the Safari Research Group at ETH Zurich, and he's working on uh, multiple projects in the areas of DRAM, hardware security, and processing in memory. And today he'll tell us about uh, random number generation. Yes, Martin, uh, thanks for introducing me. So I'll quickly reintroduce Clock DRNG now, starting with a high level summary of our work. So DRAM based two random number generators can provide low cost through random number generation to a variety of computing systems. However, prior DRAM based TRNGs are slow. These TRNGs either sample fundamentally slow physical processes or cannot effectively harness entropy from DRAM rows. In this work, we develop a high throughput and low latency TRNG that can be implemented using commodity DRAM devices. We make the key observation that a carefully engineered sequence of standard DRAM commands can activate four consecutive DRAM rows in quick succession. We call this new phenomenon quadruple activation and we refer to it as quark for short. Our key idea in developing quark TRNG, which is a high throughput random number generator, is to repeatedly perform these quark operations on DRAM rows that are initialized with conflicting data and post-process the results of these operations using a cryptographic hash function to generate two random numbers at high throughput and low latency. We evaluate Quark TNG's throughput and quality using 136 real DDR4 chips from 17 DDR4 modules. And we show that Quark TNG can achieve up to 5.4 gigabits per second throughput per DRAM channel, outperforming the state of the art by 15 times for base and 1.4 times for throughput optimized configurations. We show that Quark TRNG generates two random numbers with low latency. And we use the standard randomness tests developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology to measure the quality of Quark TRNG and show that Quark TRNG is a high quality true random number generator. High quality true random numbers are critical to many applications. And these applications include cryptography, scientific simulations, and machine learning. True random numbers can only be obtained by sampling random physical processes. And unfortunately, not all computing systems are equipped with dedicated TRNG hardware. DRAM, on the other hand, is commonly used as main memory in a wide range of computing systems. TRNGs based on DRAM enable low cost and high throughput to random number generation within DRAM chips. DRAM based TRNGs do not require additional specialized hardware for true random number generation. And therefore, they're beneficial in constrained systems. These TRNGs open application space in systems that require high throughput to random number generation. DRAM-based TRNGs are also synergistic with processing in memory systems. These systems perform computation directly within memory and improve system performance by avoiding inefficient off-chip data movement. DRAM-based TRNGs enable PIM workloads to sample true random numbers directly within the memory chip and improve the overall security and privacy of these systems by avoiding communication to possible off-chip TRNG sources. The problem with existing DRAM-based TRNGs is that they're slow. A subset of these TRNGs sample fundamentally slow physical processes, such as DRAM charge leakage. Other DRAM-based TRNGs cannot effectively harness the available entropy from DRAM rows. Our goal is to develop a high throughput and low latency TRNG that can be implemented using commodity DRAM devices and requires no additional specialized hardware for true random number generation. We make a key observation and we see that a carefully engineered DRAM command sequence can activate four DRAM rows in real DRAM chips. We call this new phenomenon quadruple actuation. Our key idea in developing a high throughput DRAM based TRNG is to use these quark operations and activate DRAM rows that are initialized with conflicting data to generate random values on DRAM sense amplifiers. I'll quickly describe how we use quark to generate random numbers on many sense amplifiers. Here are four rows of DRAM cells. A DRAM cell looks like this, sorry. It stores data as charge in a capacitor and it's accessed over an access transistor, which is enabled by a DRAM word line. A row of DRAM cells shares common word line. And DRAM cells on different DRAM rows share the same bit line that's connected to a sense amplifier. These sense amplifiers amplify the deviations in bit line voltage to an IO readable value when a cell is accessed. We initialize these DRAM rows with conflicting data patterns here in the figure, the odd address rows are filled with all ones and colored gray, and the even address rows are um, filled with all zeros and colored white. When we perform a quark operation, all four rows become enabled, and consequently, four cells on the same bit line start sharing their charges with bit line. 
with the bit line. And to do so, we send an activate precharge activate command sequence with violated timing parameters. We hypothesize that this keeps the bit line voltage below a reliable sensing threshold, and some sense amplifiers cannot correctly amplify the bit line voltage. Then these sense amplifiers randomly amplify the voltage either to a logic zero value or a logic one value based on noise originating from random physical processes. We develop quark TRNG, which generates two random numbers at high throughput by exploiting this behavior. We first measure the randomness on bit streams generated by repeatedly performing quark operations on the RAM sense amplifiers. We use Shannon entropy here as a measure of randomness. Our intuition behind using Shannon entropy is that sense amplifiers that generate a constant stream of either logic zero or logic one values will have zero Shannon entropy, whereas sense amplifiers that generate bit streams with an equal amount of ones and zeros will have one Shannon entropy. Following this one time characterization step, we identify arbitrarily sized contiguous data blocks in sense amplifiers, each with a collective 256 bits of Shannon entropy. Quark TNG will then read each such block to produce a 256 bit true random number. And overall, one Quark TNG iteration looks like this. It first initializes the four DRAM rows that are activated together and performs a Quark operation on these four rows, as I described in the previous slide. It then reads these blocks to the memory controller and post processes each block using the cryptographic hash function um, to finally produce a 256 bit true random number. We conduct our characterization study on 136 real DDR4 chips from SK Hynix um, to both evaluate quark TRNG and to understand the randomness characteristics of values produced by quark operations, such as a special distribution and data pattern dependency of entropy. We use a modified version of SoftMC, a DDR4 memory testing platform that lets us issue arbitrary DDR4 command sequences with any set of timing parameters to DRAM modules. We use rubber heaters and a temperature controller to maintain the temperature of our DRAM chips at 50 degrees Celsius. So I'll quickly wrap up with our key results. We observe that quark TNG provides two random numbers at up to 5.4 gigabits per second throughput, outperforming the state of the art for their base versions by 15 times and their enhanced or throughput optimized versions by 1.4 times. Quark TNG also provides two random numbers with very low latency. We evaluate random bit streams generated using quark TRNG and show that they pass all 15 standard randomness tests. We, evalu we evaluate quark TRNG's area and memory overheads, including the accelerator for the cryptographic hash function. Quark TRNG introduces negligible area and memory cost. We observe that quark TRNG is sensitive against temperature changes, and we see that time elapsed on the order of a month does not have a significant effect on quark TRNG's quality. Thank you for your attention. I invite you to watch our full talk and read our paper for more detail. And I will be happy to take your questions now. All right, thank you so much for the great presentation. Um, as before, please post your questions um, under the video. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, um, I, I'll have a few as well. So um, this, this is a really cool idea. It sounds like it's really close to, to being practical. So what do you think um, needs to happen for this to, to become a standard feature? Well, I guess first, um, we, I, I, I think we need to motivate two random number generation using DRAM uh, in somehow better. Um, there are like other um, me mechanisms you can use to generate two random numbers in DRAM also, but uh, as far as I know, there has been none in, in practice so far. And you, we show that here you can generate two random numbers at really high, uh, with really high throughput. So maybe that um, would have an enough impact to for people like for people to start standardizing these interfaces, um, start standardizing this functionality in uh, DRAM chips. But uh, yeah, that's I guess that's what I have to say. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, we got a question from uh, Tanvir Ahmed Khan uh, from the, U the University of Michigan. Um, how does DRAM-based random number generators compare against pseudo-number, uh, pseudo-random generators, both in terms of randomness test and throughput and latency? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I would say, so that there are two, first I'll start by answering those two aspects and there's also the security aspect, which uh, is cl like clearly two random numbers Two random number generators are advantages in that area. 
But if you were to uh, compare the throughput and latency of pseudo random number generators against TRNGs, I would say that, I mean, without hopefully loss of generality, pseudo random number generators will be faster because you can um, generate those based on mathematical uh, transformations and you can, um, in theory, create a device that would um, that will do many of those operations in parallel, so you can generate them at really high speeds. In fact, a recent uh, FPGA-based PRNG, um, I think, showed results going over terabits of true random numbers per second. And um, as for the statistical testing, PRNGs have to pass all the NIST tests as well. So they are, statistically speaking, as um, they, they generate um, with streams, that are, um, sorry, um, that will, basically that will be as random as true random number generation in the sense that they will pass all those statistical tests. So, yeah. Um, we got another question. Um, will SRAM show the same characteristics uh, and can we use uh, on-chip cache for uh, true random number generation? Um, well, that's another good question, I'd say. Um, we didn't really investigate how SRAM behaves um, under quadruple activation. Um, I guess I don't really know about the fundamentals of SRAM to make any like more detailed comments, but there are SRAM-based TRNGs also, so there's some random physical processes going on there as well. Maybe if you were to um, implement such a logic to activate four SRAM rows, at the same time, then you could observe randomness over there too. Makes sense. Um, sounds like interesting follow-up work. Um, yeah. So uh, I have I have another question. So with uh, with random number generators like this, an interesting question is always can, how can you attack them uh, and bias it in some way? And uh, with URAM, a question is uh, could you do, do attacks like Rohammer, for example? Um, would, would that allow you to, to affect the random number generation in some way? Well, clearly, um, we see that the randomness characteristics of values resulting from clock operations change with the data patterns. We used to initialize the RAM rows before we do clock operations. So uh, by doing row hammer, you can flip bits. So you, you would modify that data, initial data pattern. And then, yeah, yeah that could result in a lower quality to random number generator. You could attack it that way, I would say, yes. Um, and we got one more question on the chat, um, which is a follow-up question. Can you use DRAM randomness as seeds for suited random number generation algorithms? Yes, yes, that's uh, correct. Um, there are these class of PRNGs that are called CS PRNGs, uh, which are cryptographically secure PRNGs. Um, that um, th th those are those use seeds that are generated from a true random number generator and are I guess secure enough to be used in the, the random numbers random numbers they generate are secure enough to be used in cryptographic applications. So you could do that also. So I, I guess in that case the the bandwidth wouldn't be as important because you need much much fewer random data that gets generated by your by your DRAM based generator. True, in, in that CSPRNG case, yes, I, I would say so. All right, I guess we have time for one more question. Um, uh, we have another one. Are there physical properties of DRAMs that varies from one vendor to another that influence the quality of your TRNG? Yeah, so that's one thing that we weren't able to observe because we couldn't observe Quark on um, DRAM devices from different vendors. So we could only observe them on SK Inexes um, DRAM chips. Um, and regarding the, the difference between chips from the same manufacturer, uh, there, there is some difference. So you, you see um, randomness in the sense that more Shannon entropy, let's say, at more average Shannon entropy in one DRAM chip than, than in the other DRAM chip. That makes sense. All right, this, this brings us to the end of this time slot. Um, thanks again for the great presentation. Um, and as before, please post more questions uh, on the program. Um...